games. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of the PS4 and Xbox One era is all of the games that released in just a totally busted state. Don't get me wrong, broken games have existed since long before the PS4. Weeby, you are not allowed to say a particular piece of content sucks, okay? You are not allowed to say that. You almost exclusively push me to watch Bill Maher, okay? Like, literally. You constantly are asking, we're going to do OK Buddy as well. Shut the fuck up, OK Buddy Frogs. You're Don't be annoying. We're going to do OK Buddy as well. Oh, my God. It's only five. You're going to make me end early out of anger without doing OK Buddy. Nothing I hate more than people getting together and spamming shit like this in the fucking chat. S4 and Expo, and a shout out Superman 64. Hi Clark, how are you? Good to see you. Haven't seen you since college when you lasered that professor. But there definitely weren't nearly as many big budget AAA busters. You know, Big Rigs is barely comprehensible, but that game was made by one man in a pond, not a giant. To be fair, Bethesda has been making broken. Uh, Bethesda has been making broken video games uh, since it's the it's since its inception. There's never been a Bethesda game that has come out without, like, uh, you know, game-breaking bugs from the jump. Like, actually, as a matter of fact, because I'm such an old-school gamer, I will go so far as to say that, like, a lot of old games, some of the greatest games of all time, were busted when they first came out. Some of the best games, like Vampire Bloodline Masquerade, straight up was like so broken it had it featured so much jank it was one of the greatest games of all time i've talked about how it probably is the greatest game of all time endlessly replayable and it was so fucking busted that it would it, it had like a lot of uh game breaking bugs featured in it uh, anyway. Triple A Megatron. Back in the prehistoric days of the Xbox 360 and PS3, downloading an update to fix issues or add stuff to your disc-based game after its release was like a fairly new concept, but like an actually pretty cool concept. Wait, so the interweb can make my already legendary game even more legendary by downloading this epic Chuck Wars update? <laughs> That's pretty like a boss. I see no way this could ever end badly for the consumer. It is 2007. I just saw Michael Clayton. But nowadays, the disc inside that case you just bought is practically dead weight the second you've installed the game <laughs> and downloaded the likely necessary giant update full of fixes not included on the disc because the disc was actually manufactured months prior to the game's set release date and the developers kept working on stuff during that time likely because the publisher set the release date way too early and were just like it's fine everyone has the internet you'll fix it in time just never stop working you don't have to see your family your family is dumb <laughs> Family True. are literally the cringiest idiots I've ever seen. Why do you want to go home to them? Dude, goofy. Your family? L. The disc may as well just be a doctor's note that tells your PS4, yes, my son actually does own the game. Now, go ahead and give him the necessary day one flu shot. Oh my god, it's 87 gigabytes. Fallout 76 didn't even actually come with a disc, so you actually just got a cool new blue coaster for your psychotic Reddit dungeon. Basically, if you don't have internet access nowadays as a gamer, you're screwed. But my goal with this video isn't just to be like, wow, things used to be better back in the day and now they're all bad, grr, because it's not that simple or true. Big budget broken video games exist for a lot of reasons. The first one being making video games is just really, really hard. I have been True. openly critical of many big budget AAA games on this channel, but I hope that I have always made one thing very Crystal Pepsi clear. A lot of very talented people work very hard for very long, crunchy Nature Valley hours to make even seemingly simple stuff like this possible and it's crazy. And in order for a game to be even considered pretty good by the general public, gameplay, sound, story, characters, performance. Controversial take, possibly. I think our, uh, Red Dead 2 is the greatest single player game of all time, with one exception. It's original, it, it's, it's like first mission is so unnecessarily long. Like so unnecessarily long. That is the only hurdle to overcome with its with respect to replayability. What do I mean by this? The fact that there are still to this day new sequences 
that go viral on TikTok from a game that is so fucking old at this point that no one had ever seen before, like little Easter eggs. No single player game has ever created a living, breathing, open world like RDR2. I guess with the exception of Skyrim. Fair. Also one of my favorite games of all time. And also Breath of the Wild. Again, another one of my favorite games of all time. Like you're, you're describing some of the, you know, these are the all-time greats. We're talking about single player, by the way. But I do think that uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is, you know, is up. It's the best, I think. It's the most like uh, lifelike single player open world I've ever seen. All of these things have to perfectly align in the in the nights in the gamer night sky. Obviously, modern technology has made creating virtual worlds a lot easier than it was back in the 80s or 90s, and I think we often take that for granted. We've come a long way from the days where 3D was a bit more of a fluid, abstract concept like jazz, and you aimed a gun with the same finger you drove James Bond with. But with better tools and better hardware comes bigger projects, with bigger budgets, with bigger teams, with bigger lists of bigger problems that your big ass better fix with your big tractor. And if you've ever been hanging out with a big group, you know that even doing something as simple as deciding where to go for dinner can quickly become a f***ing boss fight. Especially when your friend's mom who's paying for the dinner has all these crappy dinner demands because she's trying to satisfy her dinner shareholders. This metaphor is getting a little goofy. I think you get the point. I know half of you are just thinking about Michael Clayton still. So I think the first obvious reason for AAA games releasing in a broken state is that game development is just insanely hard and requires so much dedicated collaboration and efficient time management and it's a miracle that any video game ever gets finished and is even exists at all and all video games should go to heaven the second reason i agree is <laughs> okay buddy that's enough about you hi i'm jakey jakey and jakey attorney and i'm here to tell you about today's video sponsor paypal honey honey is a free online shopping tool that offers that 50 to Games episode of Nabo Jabo in the age of Michael Clayton. As most of you in the audience know, new video games sell around $60 or I guess now $70 on PS5 and Xbox Series S, X. Why the f did they call them that? And it's been around that $50 to $60 price point for a while, even though. Also, another goat, dude. This, like. I think Metal Gear Solid 2 just, like was my first interaction with a game that like changed my life. Like it was it was probably the first game that I ever played that was like, "Oh my god. This is what a video game this is it. This is what the fuck this is something different." Just let's let's take a brief moment and think about Kojima song. What's he doing? What's he up to? I hope he's happy. I love you. Let's continue. No AAA games take way longer to make now and have way bigger budgets than back in the day when I was star quarterback. So because of all that... Splinter Cell or MGS? What kind of fucking question is that? What? Metal Gear Solid, dude. What? What are you talking about? I mean, I loved Splinter Cell, but like... What? <laughs> what? And also inflation. In some cases, it's kind of a steal to get a game like Elden Ring for only 60 bucks when Eternal Ring was 50 bucks 23 years ago. And the swords in that game are tiny. They're not nearly as girthy or as long as Elden Ring. You go, in, you go out in public with that shrinking ink? I'll kick your ass! Donkey Online has a really good video about video game pricing that you should go watch later, but not right now. If you leave, you won't see how I learned how to spin. I'm gonna spin later. <laughs> You're gonna to wanna to see that. So if you're a company whose main priority at the end of the day is just to generate as much profit as humanly possible, why not 
cut a few corners, you know, assuming that your reputation isn't all that important to you. Because if it's a choice between A, spending millions of dollars for every month that you lengthen development time to ensure that you release a relatively bug-free and finished product, and hope it eventually pays off because lots of people recognize that it's good quality and buy it and sing your praises and you win awards at the big show and Jeff goes, oh man, your game is so big, it's the biggest game I've ever seen, mm -hmm. which is all a very big gamble. Or B, set a very unrealistic release date that you know damn well you will not make and force your team to crunch their asses off only to still release a broken game that you'll maybe eventually fix with a giant update long after release and after you've already made all your money. And to make sure you definitely see a return on your giant investment and satisfy your investors, you do all these pre-order bonuses and fancy trailers with celebrities just to guarantee that people buy your game before. God, hot take number two, Cyberpunk was such a good game. Such a good game. I don't know how the fuck I was able to play it. I had issues, but like very limited ones. But then also like very obvious ones that everyone experienced, like the cops materializing out of fucking thin air. But it was such a, it was such an awesome universe, dude. Fuck. God damn it, dude. Man, it was a good ass fucking game. God, I love single player games so much. Because you played on a relatively beastly PC. Yeah, I did. I did play on a very beastly PC, but um, but even then, a lot of people were saying that it was like, you know, broken for them. You know what I mean? For gamers can even know that the game is busted as hell because you've also made it so that no publication can drop a review for the game until the day the game comes out, which should be illegal. Yeah, if the only thing you care about is sales in your quarterly reports, you're definitely planting at bombsite B. Just like Ubisoft and EA and Bethesda and Square Enix and Activision and CD Projekt Red and Microsoft like several times. You very rarely see Sony or Nintendo or Rockstar publish a big, broken, unfinished mess because they know that their reputation is a big reason people purchase games that have their cute little sexy logos in the corner. The Last of Us Part Two, Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man, God of War, all of these Sony exclusives released in relatively bug-free and complete states. And, well, Days Gone was iffy, but we don't have to talk about Days Gone. Yeah, I, I, I said your name, sweet. Now go back to bed, okay? Doesn't mean that Never those devs it. didn't have to crunch like hell to reach the finish line. No, unfortunately, crunch is a huge problem across the entire industry. And even Golden Girl publishers and developers like Sony and Naughty Dog aren't exceptions to that. It's still very much not ideal. But apparently, even Golden Girls like Nintendo or Rockstar, companies with some of the highest rated games of all time under their championship belt, they push site B too. It's B, rush B, rotate B, rotate B. The GTA definitive trilogy was- Okay, 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 okay. Grand Theft Auto now, or Rockstar now is like, let's not even talk about it. Like, it's just, there's no better representation that like capitalism ultimately ruins art than motherfucking, mother freaking uh, Rockstar and what it has turned into. Grand Theft Auto Online gave us no pixel, which I love, and I think it's brilliant, and it's awesome. But it also basically bricked Rockstar's development, okay? Like, it's just, it ruined it. It ruined it. They were like, oh, shit, dog. We can make money without, like, really doing too much? Are you kidding me? They copyright struck a mod project to recreate Grand Theft Auto 2 Chinatown on the GTA 5 engine. Fuck Rockstar. That blows my mind. Yeah, Valve with Steam is the same shit, too. Ay, yeah, yeah. Don't even get me started again. Oh my God. I mean, Konami with Gotcha or Pachinko machines or whatever the fuck they do. What is the, the gambling shit that they do? EA and its loot boxes. Okay, EA was never good. Don't ever put EA. What? I'm talking about Rockstar. I'm talking about. I, I, I'm talking about like fucking like incredible games. And you just said EA. EA was never good. EA has never been good, and it was never good. And you're fucking shut up. I I hate, I hate motherfuckers who love Madden and shit, dude. It's like EA is what ruined the gaming industry. The reason why every game is now basically the same with like reskins is literally because they looked at Electronic Arts and were like, well, that's the most effective way to. That's the most effective way to churn out product that is exactly the same that people will shut the fuck up and consume. 
EA is literally what every other company turned into, which is why it fucking sucks. EA is a publisher, not a developer. They have some good games under their belt, but they keep interfering with developers and making games so much worse. Exactly. And as far as like being, as far as like developing games or having people develop games under their banner, their, their, their style of like game development is what Ubisoft took, is what turned Ubisoft into the company that made Assassin's Creed to the company that made Assassin's Creed a million times over. Holy shit, make a new fucking game, guys. Oh, yeah, we'll make a new game. Just kidding. It's still basically Assassin's Creed, but now it's in the future. It's basically Assassin's Creed, but, like, you know, with, like, different skins. Far Cry, another great example. Far Cry, made by Turkish Germans, okay, was, like, a, a system-breaking video game that was, like, too good at the time for all the PCs that had, uh, uh, for, for the PCs to carry it. It was literally a video game that they made. Like, Far Cry, when it was first made, was literally too good. You mean Crisis? I thought the original Far Cry was also made with, by Turks. That was Crisis? I thought Far Cry, or the original Far Cry was also made by Turks, no? Far Cry 1, when it was originally made, no, no, Crisis is not the PC-breaking game, dude. No, Far Cry 1. Dude, you guys are fucking gaslighting me. Shut up. Yes, Crisis was from the same team. This chat is too Zoomer to remember. Yes, Far Cry 1, when it first came out, was literally, like, not working on benchmark PCs, okay? Far Cry 1, when it first came out, was the original PC killer. None of you motherfuckers remember that because none of you motherfuckers were around back then. You were literally semen or maybe protein in your father's ball sack, okay? The meme is, can it run Crisis, not Far Cry? It doesn't matter what the fucking meme is. Holy shit. When Far Cry first came out, it was also literally, oh my God, people are saying it was Crisis. I'm going to lose my mind. Please stop. Far Cry 1, when it first came out, was like unimaginable to play on PCs, okay? None of you know anything about video games because you weren't alive back then. Shut the fuck up, please. Let me cook. The same developer worked on both Crisis and Far Cry 1. It was developed by Crytek. Yes, Crisis itself was also a game breaker, uh, a PC breaker, which is why when it came out, the will it run Crisis became the meme. But originally, Far Cry 1 was the OG will it run fucking Far Cry 1 meme, I guess, but not really a meme. It wasn't a meme. It wasn't as popular. Haklı değilsin ama çaktırma Far Cry mis gibi optimizdeydi. Hayır değil de abi. Hatta ben Level magazinini okudum amına koyayım hatırlıyorum. Level magazininde e, yazdıkları şeyleri hatırlıyorum yani oynanmıyor diye. Level. Level amına koyayım. Level. Anyway, I remember senden de boomerum king. Evet ama bilmiyorsun galiba yani. I love the people that are saying but will it run crisis when the fucking first game that came out 3 years prior literally had the same engine. Like, do you not understand? Look, Crisis was released on November 13, 2007 by Crytek and EA, okay? It was then developed on the latest version of the Cry engine, which also powered Crytek's first title, Far Cry. It was one of the first games to ever utilize Microsoft's DirectX 10 API framework, which was only available on Windows Vista or later. Other feats prided by the Crytek developers was the game being created with over 1 million lines of code and utilization of one gigs of texture data. And when it first came out, the Crytek engine was so powerful that you literally, like the, the same will it run crisis meme wasn't a meme back then, but basically people were saying it's not, it fried people's fucking computers. It was like impossible to play. Look, Rawful, look at the screenshots. The engine was updated, bro. Yeah, I know the engine was updated, but this was also a fucking benchmark game. Like this was literally... This was literally a game. You're right. From a 2004 review of Far Cry 1, if you pay just a few thousand dollars for a new hot rod, this is the game to show it off. With everything cranked up on a fast machine, this game is able to produce graphics that at least match the screens we've seen on Half-Life 2 and Doom 3. Yes, it's that good. Maybe you and your friends made jokes about Far Cry, but it wasn't a widespread meme like Crisis was. That's the point. I'm not saying it's there was a meme around it. I'm saying that at the time when Far Cry 1 came out, it was literally... Also, a fucking insanely hard to run game because it was so, it was like revolutionary. 
Why are we fucking stuck on this point? This this shit sucks, dude. We're talking about 2004. Half of you motherfuckers literally were not alive. We're done. It's one of the most appalling and disappointing re-releases of a beloved franchise that the world has ever seen. And this is Rockstar, the company that put out this game, and this game, and this game, and this game. And fuck it, even this game is amazing. And you know money isn't tight with how much of a cash cow GTA 5 continues to be. Did you ever play Need for Speed Underground 2? Yes. 10 years later, like this isn't an indie publisher rushing out Hog Simulator 3 because they're strapped for cash after their Kickstarter failed. No, this is Rockstar. They, it's just greed. I don't know if it falls on Rockstar. Yes, the original Far Cry was only released on PC. You're fucking, yes. Whoever said they played Far Cry on a, on a console is wrong. The original, when it first came out, was only released on PC. Or their parent company, Take Two, but at some point, someone or someones somewhere said, F it, we'll do, do it live! And Nintendo, they just published the two lowest rated mainline Pokemon games to ever exist. Games now famous online for their hilarious bugs. And I ain't talking about Caterpie. And even if there's a fun game buried underneath all the bugs, it should be illegal to advertise and sell a product in this state. And that brings me to my final reason that I think broken AAA games will continue to exist. You. I touched on this in my ads and video games video, but oh my god, stop pre-ordering games. That's why these companies keep promising to serve you hot lunch square pizza and then go, psych, you're getting swapped! Because they know the average uh -huh. consumer is gullible as hell and overly trusting and super loyal to their favorite thing, and they prey on those sensibilities to make sure that your money ends up in their pocket. The funniest thing is, like, I've literally never pre-ordered a game, and it, even as a streamer, like, I, I like it's not even principle. I just think it's so fucking stupid. And now the worst part about it is now they fucking make you pre-order a game because if you don't pre-order it, you can't play the beta. It's so fucking whack, dude. It's so whack where they're like, oh, you want to you, you want a juicy two day access to the fucking game. Now you have to pre-order. It sucks. And it does. Every single time. Pokemon was busted as hell and still sold 20 million copies. It's like serious gamer Stockholm syndrome where people will watch a pre-release review for a game like Dying Light 2 on IGN or GameSpot and defend the game like their fucking life depends on it, even though they haven't even played it yet. Okay guys, but remember, this is without the day one patch and we all know those usually fix everything. <laughs> you can't spell ignorant without IGN or ants. And even months after the damage is done and a broken product has sold millions of copies because apparently gamers have toasters for brains. People in the comments will once again applaud and defend companies like EA or CD Projekt Red for sticking with their game and fixing it long after release, which it's like, I guess that deserves some level of praise, maybe? You know what I mean? It's like you buy a taco for the full price because you were advertised a full taco on the fucking taco screen. And when you get that taco, you open up the greasy paper just to see- Yeah, these kids have only played GTA in 3D, they don't know yet. Until you fucking drove a tank on, uh, on a top-down video game over an entire group of Girl Scouts, okay? Until you have literally- uh, Until you drove a tank over an entire troop of Girl Scouts- don't talk to me about video games. Do you understand? A busted ass half taco shell with only beans on it's only beans. Oops, all beans. And then six months later, a Taco Bell employee rings your doorbell and gives you the other half of that busted taco that still doesn't have all the meat on it that they promised. And your response is to start clapping? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? And don't get me wrong, definitely throw love to the hardworking individual devs that actually got in the crunchy taco shell trenches and coated this broken mess back together. But give zero fucking credit to the shitty overlord Taco Bell EA Corporation responsible for that broken taco that you paid full price for in the first place. God damn it, I need a taco or at least a, a churro to the throat. Wah! Yeah, Red Faction was fire. A lot of initially broken games but can eventually blossom a little into boring. really good ones like No Man's Sky, Master Chief Collection. Final Fantasy XIV was like completely reborn.
Reborn, pun intended, and people love it now, and that's awesome. But this cycle will repeat as long as gamers continue to buy games and pre-order games before even knowing if it runs as well as the pudding on their treadmill. The only possible change starts with you and what you choose. Yes, I played Medal of Honor. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep getting anthems shoved into our ant holes. But you know what they say, you can't spell Nakey Jakey without Jane. Kevin. I'm gonna start uploading more stuff to Jaquan the Jequel, so if you wanna go subscribe to my twin, you can get some indie slop in between my AAA prestige exclusive DLC Nakey content.